What happened? Do, do you get to show up, book yourself in, and then leave, or they throw you in the clink? How does this all go down? So from what I've spoken to my attorney about, I'm really surprised that they didn't let me know that there was a warrant for my arrest and that they didn't give me the opportunity to actually turn myself in. Uh this conservative social media star has been booked and busy with charges filed against her for January 6th. And in this next clip, You'll hear exactly why this insurrectionist turned influencer argues that her follower count warrants more than anything but an immediate sentence to jail. When I was approached by seven armed FBI agents who seized my phone, announced that they had a warrant for my arrest, um, put handcuffs on me, I was put in the back of a car, I was immediately driven down to the FBI headquarters where I was supposed to talk to two agents and I was presented with the complaint and the charges against me, um, which includes most of them, most of the charges includes what what most J6ers are getting charged with. And then on top of that, the leading charge is what they're saying is a theft of government property. And so after that, I was put in the Santa Ana jail. I was detained there before I was brought before a judge and I was released um, with no provisions, essentially. That was Isabella DeLuca, a right wing content creator who is playing victim, nitpicking against federal agents who allegedly ambushed her and arrested her without further notice. But why are young conservative influencers like this entitled to documenting the march on the Capitol live for all the world to see on social media and expect to get away with it? Voice from our collective voice, our government of we the people, of the people, by the people, for the people is also a terrorist. And if they're an American citizen, they are a traitor. They made the decision that we the people no longer have a right to govern ourselves. I'm a proud digital soldier, Proxmanian, and January 6, 2021, inmate number 376303. I was given the max sentence of 180 days for unlawful entry public. I served 161 days in Washington, D.C. Correctional Treatment Facility, a.k.a. jail, from 30 September 22 through 9 March 23. We the people are ready to fight. Insurrectionists like the one in the earlier clip, costume clad and with bejeweled American flags, declare themselves arbiters of the United States. Martyrs committed to the conservative cause, who actually have very little to say on the state of affairs today. He's now celebrating the events of January 6th. I mean, he's talking about pardoning those who are convicted of crimes uh, related to the January 6th insurrection. He's, he's calling them hostages uh, at, at his rallies. He plays a recording of the January 6th defendants singing the Star Spangled Banner. I wonder how you react when you see the president celebrating that day, not, not, not even running away from it, but, but now celebrating it. He, he's disgusting, but I know I'm not going to change anybody's mind. Uh, by the way, the video that came out along with those people singing the national anthem, the person who picks up the phone in a prison is the very same person who assaulted my brother. Really? They do not argue policy. They embody rhetoric by absorbing the misinformation of their alt-right outlets to act out their prejudices and preconceived notions about the country without engaging with its people. And like most of you, when you understand how limp these accusations actually are, I can't help but to roll my eyes. With tepid complaints like not being given fair warning and being detained shortly after release with no provisions, it's hard to take privileged alt-right supporters like this seriously, especially considering the extent of their own insurrectionist crimes. It seems like more than ever, the conservative party, and more particularly, the MAGA right, are prone to violent outbursts, but averse to a effective organizing. And so, when their assault on the Capitol failed, and their leading figures were quickly rounded up and rightfully tried, the right wing began to feel a fundamental slip from the long withstanding but flawed symbiosis between conservative values 
and American patriotism. But what right-wing leaders don't want you to know is the potential of the humiliating misfire of the Capitol riots is less about actually overturning the U.S. government and more about reframing the narrative on this assault on America. Because as much as they'd like you to believe that the January 6th riots were an expertly coordinated and executed plan, the truth of the matter betrays the opportunistic approach of the right and the pivot onto social media, distorting the optics post January 6th has allowed the MAGA crowd to co-opt the leading narrative that casts them as inversely patriotic and persecuted, and therefore expecting leniency and entitled to special circumstances. But at what cost exactly? It is clear that the MAGA crowd is as anti-American as they come, attacking the officers they've sworn to protect as a party. Because when faced with one of the many casualties of the alt-right, a member of the Capitol Police, the Republican Party turn up their noses in disapproval, ignoring the deep irony of a party that has trouble telling the truth about its beliefs. And even in the ensuing legal fallout of the Capitol riots, these radicalized supporters continue to hold a failed belief about their efforts during January 6th, using their delusions to dilute the consequences of such a vicious attack on our democracy. They did very little beyond shake the international faith in American stability and rear the ugly, irrational head of the right wing. But the continual martyrdom of public figures within the conservative party help reinforce the narrative of the persecution of conservative ideals and their ensuing doubling down on absurd rhetoric and illegitimate politics. After being detained, convicted, and even serving full terms for their crimes against the United States, these backwards patriots are still pushing for the downfall of American democracy, opting against their best interests to protect the moneyed classes, strengthen institutional barriers of prejudice, and evoke their regressive sensibilities. These alt-right supporters are ultimately exploited by the media machine, intent on platform Forming their ignorance, to exercise their rhetoric to the fullest, and regurgitate moot talking points that initiate this destructive fake news cycle once more. This is the real tragedy of the ignorance rampant on the right. It is weaponized against them and geared towards serving the needs of Republican elites, one of whom I can definitely say you're familiar with, because he'll be running for president in November if the police don't catch, if his crimes don't catch up to him first. And the question ultimately is, for all you alt-right content creators, as you become more visible, more popular, or even more infamous, are you willing to play fodder for Trump and the MAGA campaign when the time comes? Because if you are, then be ready to join Trump in prison, where there are no special rules and there are no ring lights. This is Adrian Costa with Rebel HQ. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check back for more videos. See you guys soon.